Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. Today we're doing something really fun, or at least I had a lot of fun doing this. We're going to build the Eiffel Tower, and we're going to laser cut it like a puzzle, put it all together, and you're going to be shocked by how beautiful this comes out. So I happened to cross this file on the internet for the Eiffel Tower to cut it out. It really wasn't in great shape. I had to spend a few hours changing everything around and the first test cuts I did with it didn't go well. So I had to do a bunch of work to it, but this is the final project right here. And I'm going to cover how to cut out all of these pieces first and then assemble it. And then I'm going to show you the final product and you, I think you're going to love it. And you're going to want to do this because this is just fantastic. I got this idea about a year or two ago and I 3D printed one. And when I ran across this on the internet, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do this on the laser. I think everybody's going to love it. I think you will. This is my final template. So if you zoom way out, you see that it comes in six pieces. So you need six pieces of... I'm going to suggest basswood. That's what I used on this particular job. But if you have a CO2 laser, I mean, you can use regular plywood to do this as well. But I'm telling you that the basswood came out nice. It's sturdy. And I'm going to put a link below down in the show more section of the video where you can buy anything that I talk about today. Uh, I'm going to put an affiliate link down there. You can help support the channel uh, by using that link. So let me show you how I did this. So the first thing I did was I did a framing. Now this has to be an 8 by 12 piece of wood. And the final product comes out to 23 inches tall. The 8 by 12 piece of wood will cut out every one of these sections perfectly. And in fact, this particular section has some extra space. So what I did was I created this, this test piece right here. And the first thing you're going to want to do, you don't have to sacrifice anything in this because there's plenty of room up here on the 8x12. So you just start the job. I have all the cuts and layers set up over here. You just start the job. You put in your own speed and your own power and you figure out what it's going to take to cut this out perfectly. Once it gets about halfway through, you can just stop the job and then take a look at it and see, did these pieces fall right out? And that's pretty much what you want to have. You want to make sure that these little pieces right here fall out. And once that's done, then you can go ahead and delete this and then just run the burn on this one here. And the way I set this up in Lightburn is I look at these numbers on the grid. See these numbers across the top, the side and the bottom? This one I use 3.1 as a reference point. So you see how it comes down here to 3.1? And then over here is another 3.1. So what I do is I take this down to that 3.1 line. I bring this over to that 3.1 line. And where they intersect here is how I'm going to frame this. And once I frame this, all of the other pieces are going to fit in the same exact spot on my laser bed. So you really only have to frame it once. So now the way I've got this set up is it's going to cut all the inside pieces first. And then it's going to come back around and cut out the outsides. And that's important when we get over here because on some of these pieces like this little one here for instance if it does them all together and I'm, I'm going to tell you that I've tried this before and on some pieces light burn just doesn't cut the center pieces first even if you come over here to laser and go to optimization settings and remove these two and turn on cut inner shape shapes first on some of them it just doesn't do it so I'm very careful and I set this all up and there's three different layers here so if we look at cuts and layers you'll see we have the line the toolpath I use for framing that first one we have the green if I right click you'll see that's all the green that gets cut first then the gold gets cut second which are these two inner pieces here and then it comes back and it does the red that's how this cuts and it's extremely important you know I, I always say this to everybody that you run that test piece first that little piece that I showed you that was up here center it up with this one here start the burn when you get halfway through stop it and take a look and make sure that those pieces have fallen out if you have to do it a couple more times, so let's say this was here and you ran that test first, all you have to do is move it over and do another one there. And you can move it over again, do another one there, move it over this way until you get it just right. This one is extremely important because you have to get these settings perfect or else it's not going to work right. So let me show you real quick how this cut. And I've got this in four times speed. Sorry, <laughs> camera's juggling around here. But this is pretty much the way it worked. It cut the whole inside out first. And then it came back and it cut out the outside. And this is not going to be a long video, so it's just going to take a minute for this to go through here. And then I'll show you how I got them out. All of these little pieces 
that it's cutting out here, they come out pretty easy, but not really easy because they're just cut through. And the smaller they are, the harder they are to get out of the opening, even though they're cut all the way through. They, if you tilt it just a little bit, it gets stuck. So uh, what I do is I take the finished piece and I flip it over in my hand and then I poke them out from the other side. And this is what you're going to see right here. And I use just, you know, anything to poke it out with. You can use a tiny screwdriver or in my case, I just use the end nozzle for my air assist. Uh, I don't use the air assist in any of these videos because I know most of you don't have it. So uh, I do everything without the air assist. But if you flip it over, they, they just pop right out. And if they do get stuck, and here I am flipping it over, I, I finally realized, hey, I should be doing this from the other side. If they do get stuck, all you have to do is put your finger under it and hold it in place while you push down and it'll pop right out. So you'll see that all of these just popped right out, even the tiniest ones. And I wouldn't suggest going any smaller than what I have here. But uh, if you have a larger laser, then you can go larger. Just make sure that you do select all or control or command plus the letter A to select everything and scale it proportionately. Because if it's not scaled proportionately, it's not going to go together properly. So this is what I was left with after cutting all of the pieces out. And I've got four of the legs, I've got four of the second story, four of the tower, and all of the little parts that go together. And these are the, the smaller parts. This is the very top over here. So what I did was I dry fitted the base. And make sure that you dry fit all these parts first because you want to make sure that you've got them in the right order. If you flip a piece around and start gluing it up together, sometimes when you flip it around, it's not going to work. So I dry fitted them first and then I just laid them out in four different directions. Then I came back and I put glue on these pieces only. This piece here, this piece here here so that I was still able to flex everything else before gluing it. So I did these two pieces first, then I went around on the rest of them and did those, and then I lined up the corners and glued those in place. And I use a CA glue and an activator. So first I put the CA glue on, I fit them in place, make sure it's right, and then just give it a quick shot with the activator and then it's solid as a rock. I'll put a link to that down below as well. So this is the platform for the second story. So I went ahead and dry fitted that one and it made sure that it fit properly and then I glued it in place. And I only glued where these tabs hold right here. There, 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 and the other four. Then the railings came next. And you'll notice that the railings are long on one side and then over here they're short on the other side. So you have to make sure that you fit these properly. I don't think you can put these in the wrong way. So you put the four railings on next. Then I dry fitted the second story. And I did the same thing on this one. I glued only these two pieces, these two bottom pieces, all the way around. And then I carefully glued the tops. So this is with the second story on. And I only had to glue these pieces here. These two here and two on every other side. And this is what I'm talking about, dry fitting. So you just want to make sure that everything fits properly because you'll notice that one end is long and one end is short. And that's on all four pieces. And then I just spread them out and I did them one at a time. I glued them together. Then I did the top and that's the finished peak. And then I fitted the second story. Same process as the first story. And then this is the tricky part. <laughs> you got to watch out here because this tower part, if you flip this piece around the other way, they won't fit into the grooves here. There's only four grooves that it fits into. Or actually, I'm sorry, eight grooves. Two on each side. But if you flip, if you have the piece going the wrong way, it won't fit in. And trust me, folks, you won't get these apart once you CA glue them. This is the only one you really have to be careful with and make sure that they're in the right place. Dry fit it first one piece at a time and then glue it up as you go. And again I only glued the bottom and then and then after it was together I lined up the top and glued the top. And this is how I can glue the top perfectly. So I already have the bottom part glued and all I did was run a line of glue right here with this bent back and then put it perfectly in place, held it for three or four seconds and it was ready to go. And there is the final product. And man, let me tell you, this came out fantastic. It really did. And guess what? You don't even have to finish it. It's the same color as the Eiffel Tower. And here's the final product. And I think it came out just fantastic. In fact, I did this this morning and my wife came out waking up this morning and she looked at it and she said, oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. I can't believe how beautiful that came out. So I think it came out great. 
there's there it is there's the eiffel tower and man i'll tell you what cutting these out of this basswood it just looks the same there's mine there's the eiffel tower look how perfect that looks i think this really came out nice i've gone ahead and made this into a template that you can pick up at my online store all of the time that i put into it i think it's worth two dollars and 99 cents and that money goes to help support the channel to keep the videos coming and of course my patreons are going to get this for free so if you're interested in getting this file i'm going to put links down below where you can get the free file and you can do you know all of the work yourself first off this comes in one big group together that are sort of almost overlap it's very hard to work with it's going to take you some time to get everything ungrouped and regrouped and put into place so i've done all of that work already i've got this file up in my store engravencutfiles.com you can download it for two dollars and 99 cents and i'll tell you folks this is going to be one of the most fun projects that you'll ever do with the laser so take a look down below in the show more section of the video below the video i'll put all the links to everything that i've used the actual wood itself there's a great seller uh, on amazon that sells this wood in a package of i believe it's 12 he double wraps them so he puts three to a bag and then they're ziplocked shut so there's no moisture that gets in there and then he puts four packages inside a big ziploc bag and ziplocks that one shut so uh, you're pretty sure that the wood's going to be protected between the time that it leaves his shop and the time that it arrives at your shop and you don't have to worry about it warping or anything like that they're all nice pieces i bought several of these from him time and time again and i've never gotten a bad product i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you get out there and you make this eiffel tower because it's something that you really can be proud of you can display it in your home and my wife said this morning we put it above our tv on our wall unit and my wife said you know what you got to make a couple of more monuments <laughs> that we can put up here have sort of like a global theme this is probably just the first one out of a few but anyway i hope you enjoyed the video and as always i thank you for watching mm -hmm.